think you hear background noise from me. It may be, um, but we are, I think we're ready to go. I might have to go to another room. My kids, my grandkids are here in the room with the TV on. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, no problem. That's part of it. Um, yeah. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we are here with your live updates. Um, I am Justin T. Johnson, your secretary treasurer. And with me, I have. I'm Lisa Morgan, GIE vice president. And. Oh. And we have with us, I know you're used to, and you're probably tired of seeing our faces because we also have Joe Fleming, our GAE lobbyist with us. And by now you're probably tired of seeing the three of our faces, right? So we decided um, we can't even call them guests this evening because they are not guests. Um, they are home with us um, as they are members and not just members, but they are our extra special people, our heroes, our ESPs, our education support professionals. So go ahead, Lisa, take it away. Okay, so we wanted this conversation to be from our ESPs and their perspective. So we want to let them introduce themselves to you. They are all wonderful members from around the state. And we wanted to talk tonight about our reopening of schools, but not just about what's going to happen in the classroom, but what's going to happen with all our wonderful ESPs and their concerns about being able to do their jobs as we open back up. So first, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and um, kind of start at the um, first the children see if um, Ernest, you want to introduce yourself and then we'll just go through and tell us who you are and what you do every day. And um, just a little nugget about what, what you're doing here tonight. Yes, my name is Ernest McCord, CCEA. I'm a bus driver and I also sit on the uh, executive board and the AR in our location. Great. Alisa? Okay, my name is Alisa Robinson of Richmond County, um, Augusta, Georgia. I am a bookkeeper and I also sit on the executive board here in Richmond County. Angela? Hi, I'm Angela Tucker Holmes. I'm a plan engineer at the Cap Elementary School of the Arts. I'm a Ford, former board member of GAE. Um, I basically make sure the maintenance of the school is um, done. And uh, I'm the first line. I'm there before anybody in the building. And Teresa. Um, my name is Teresa Lewis. I'm a cafeteria manager in Gwinnett County, uh, Richards Middle School. Um, I'm also a GAE board of director member. And that's about it. <laughs> Okay, great. So we want this to be an organic conversation. If you all, um, let's switch it around. Angela, since you are the first one in the building every morning, um, tell us a little bit about the impact that COVID-19 is has had on you and the concerns you have, if you have some, about opening the building back up to the remainder of the staff and our students. Okay, we just officially got back to work last week, but I've been going up to the building, checking the building out to make sure everything is um, prepared to come back in. Um, checking for break-ins and stuff like that. We, before we left the last day, we wiped everything down. And last week when we came in, we done three days uh, of wiping down to ensure that the building is safe and ready for everyone to come in. My concern is I have elderly people on my staff as well, and some have health issues and wearing a mask every day uh, for eight hours, it's, it's not gonna be convenient for them or anyone else. Um, also, we got to start looking at making sure that we have the proper PPE equipment for our staff. Uh, I would like to see more training because COVID-19 uh, COVID is new. Uh, to everyone, and there's no training being involved for us custodians at this moment for COVID-19. Even though we deal with other issues in the building, 
but we also got to start taking a look at what's gonna be the difference from someone having allergies and uh, sneezing when uh, that time of the season come around, if it's COVID-19 or if it's just an allergy problem. So those things that we need to take a look at. And uh, I'm hoping to be at a round table soon with someone to, for everybody to see what the custodian see within the building. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alicia, you're the person at the front door. What, well, what I'm, con about? I'm concerned about when the children are coming in, like with the car riders. So as our custodians are the first ones there in the school, then we are the next ones to come in. I, I would like to see thermometers. I would like to see stations. Um, there needs to be something that's put into place for the students and the parents. A lot of times the parents want to come in and walk their, their children to class. So I wanna make sure that there's something in place. So when they're coming in, we need to have like, like I said, we need to have thermometers, we need to have sanitizers, we need to have wipes. We don't have these things as of yet. I'm hoping that uh, something will happen to where when the students do come, there'll be a plan into place for us and for the staff. Like when she was saying, we do have elderly people on, um, on our, on our roster at the school. And my concern is not only for the students, but the parents and the staff. I'm concerned about everyone that comes into the building. We all need to be protected. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Um, thank you, Elisa, for sharing that. Um, and, it, and so now this takes us back um, to, because you mentioned the kids and that's what we're here for. Is yes. our babies that we see every day. Um, and there's a, a particular individual on here with us um, this evening who make sure that these babies get to us safely. Um, and so we'd like to kind of yield this time to um, Ernest McCord there in Clayton County to just kind of have a conversation with us about what you expect uh, your bus to look like and not just your bus, but everybody's buses. Um, we were having a pre-conversation uh, before we actually went live <laughs> about the fact that this looks different in, in even in neighboring uh, locals. And so, Mr. Ernest, if you can just kind of share with us uh, some of your perspectives here. Well, one of my biggest concerns is that what are we going to be able to do to ensure that the kids are kept safe on the buses? The biggest problem that nobody has thought about, I looked at the CDC guidelines, and I did not see anything in reference to underlying kids' medical conditions. You know, we have kids that have asthma. We have kids that are diabetic. We have kids that have seizures. How are we going to be able to address the needs for these kids? So somebody needs to have a, a concrete plan on how to keep kids safe, where the driver will be able to do what needs to be done, is drive and keep the bus safe and get them to and from, from school. Oh, that's true. I mean, I definitely don't see social distancing working on a school bus that's already overpacked. Um, so you know, yeah. So thank you so much for pointing that out, Mr. Ernest. This next person um, was my particular favorite role in high school or in school K-12, <laughs> you know, as I, I always felt like it was just good to get in, to, in good with a lunch lady. It was a lunch lady for us, because that's where you get all the extra goodies. Uh, so uh, Teresa Lewis, if you could just kind of talk to us about what the cafeteria um, should look like, or, you know, some of the things that you'll need as a professional in the cafeteria. Right. Um, some of the issues that we're going to have as far as, um, you know, we're, most of the schools are modeled like um, buffets. So the students are, are not going to be able to, according to the CDC guidelines, they are not going to be able to come through the lines and get their own food like they were before. Everything is going to have to be prepackaged. Um, even having teacher bars, uh, we're not going to be able to have teacher bars. We've already been told that, according to the CDC guidelines, if the teachers wanted to come through and say get coffee, tea, lemonade, or water or whatever, they would. We would have to serve them from the back and then, you know, put in a disposable cup and sit it down and have the teachers pick it up for themselves. Uh, the students, everything is going to be prepackaged. 
um, from what I'm understanding too, um, they're modeling down on how, what they're going to serve as far as food. Before we used to serve, you know, two or three, sometimes four different entrees um, during the course of a serving day. Now they're pairing it back to where there's only going to be one entree and maybe peanut butter and jelly. Everything is going to be prepackaged. The students will not be allowed to come through the lines and um, serve themselves. Um, even seatings in the cafeteria, we're, we're not sure how that's going to look. Um, I've heard different things on, uh, I've heard rumors that they may be looking at maybe high schools doing digital learning and the elementary and middle schools spanning them out all across, you know, all of the schools. So it, it's going to be a whole different field and different look on how we're going to be able to transport these kids, how we're going to be able to feed these kids. And it's going to be a lot different. That's, um, that's I'm not sure what else. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult because then you need more people, you know, to get through that production of packaging everything and, and even the cost, um, the cost for, you know, they were trying to scale back on all the plastic and all the, you know, disposable things that we were, you know, packaging and everything. And they wanted to, you know, scale that back. And we were working with that and biodegradable, you know, trays and everything. And now with the COVID, we're going to have to go back to a lot of plastic. It's going to be a big difference this coming school year. So often we, we either we get the questions, Lisa and I, yeah. or either our uh, participants get questions. And so we have a question about kids eating in their class, in the classrooms. Um, and so this one is directed to you, Teresa. Is that something that you've kind of heard or that is being considered of students eating in the classrooms? Yeah, that was, that was another thing that I had heard that is the possibility that the kids would come through, get their lunch, that everything is packaged and then taking it back to the classrooms, which, you know, it's, you know, more work on the custodian staff, too, mm -hmm. because they would have to, you know, go and pick up all that trash, you know, from all those classrooms. They would have to, you know, clean and sanitize after all those meals and everything. So it, it, it's going to it's gonna be very taxing. I mean, you know, kind of a wanna, they want to cut back on staff and employees, but you know, reality, we're going to need more staff. Sure. That's so true. Yeah. Um, we just had another guest join us. Well, not even a guest, he, because he sits on our board. Like, he's not just a member. He's not even just a member. He's a leader. And then also, um, you know, Lisa and I were having conversations, and we were like, let's just get everybody on here. Um, so we do have Mr. Cavius Preston, uh, who is a principal down in Burke County. And so, Cavius, if you'll go ahead and introduce yourself at this time. Uh, yes, I'm Cavius Preston, uh, principal here at Burke County High School here in Waynesboro, Georgia. Uh, that's located about uh, 30 minutes uh, south of Augusta. So. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Cavius, um, uh, Justin, let me time in on that as well uh, from the class point point of view. It's going to be a lot of work. Uh, for custodians. And when you don't have enough custodians, because I know some uh, elementary schools only have like three or four custodians, and you're talking about eating in the classroom, not only when you go back eating in the classroom, you're going to bring rodents, you know, mm -hmm. because it's going to be something that's just drop on the floor or whatnot. So you're going to be dealing with a lot of issues for us, because I know some, some food service their cafeteria staff take out the trash, you know, in some school districts, because I know I've been contacted by, you know, other counties about it. And I say, 
it need to be something straight across the board what custodians and food service does because when you're dealing with food the cafeteria workers should not be taken out the trash that's right you know they should not be taken out the trash because the kids coming through the line so it need to be something across the board for the state of georgia how we're going to deal it shouldn't be on a district district issue it should be spread across the board but just like you said when right now i have including myself it's a total of eight of me us on staff at my school so normally i would be the one in the morning doing the cafeteria duties because i wanted all of my help at night you know because that's where the majority of the kids are you know during the day so but now i have to change my rationale i have to bring more people on in the daytime now so that's gonna hit my workers at night as well because i'm bringing other people to the day shift and i'm a performance art school so it's going to look totally different for us you know we have band drama and everything like that and they are used to being around each other so and i just got another grade level in my building so i'm k through eight now so i'm not k through seven i'm not k through five i'm k through eight so we got elementary and middle school in my building elementary kids don't know nothing about social distancing they do not. When they cry, whatever, they're going to come and hug on you. Mm -hmm. That's just elementary kids. So we need to look at it in a different way. Uh, when you got 20 or 25, 28 students in the classroom, the classroom ain't that big. Be having all those kids talking about social distance. And also, you know, teachers, I, I got to say this, all the things that y'all like decorating y'all rooms with, that's no longer now. Right. You, know, you can't have those cushion pillows and whatnot. Yeah, go to cry, Justin. Go to cry. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no way that you can sanitize that on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And those mic micro dust, those dust bites in those, you know, child sit on the boom. So, and those plants, teachers, you got to understand, you can't be bringing all these plants in here. Kids got allergies. Let me ask and you that's this the reason question. Why you see with elementary kids, when you bring in all of those other things into the building, it's not being funny, but you know, you causing more problems to other kids as well. But I also I would like to see every district get the sprayer. That's going to eliminate mm -hmm. some time as well. Yeah. They're expensive now because everybody, <laughs> you know, we're going to be walking around looking like Ghostbusters. I'm, I'm sorry to say that's what, <laughs> where we at now. <laughs> you know. So you can have the backpack and you can have the handheld. I've been looking into and see how much it's gonna cost. You know, they are high. So if you got a good PTA, this is time to reach out to your PTA. You know, ask them to buy at least one in the building because you know the district has been hit hard for its budget is cut. So, you know, we're gonna have to spend some money. You know, we there's no way around it. This is a new norm now. So we have okay, a question so let me from ask Alisa. You, uh, yes, go okay, ahead, Alisa. Okay, so and I'm, I'm I'm addressing it to the um to her because okay, so we have a computer lab, and I, I think most schools do where the classes go down uh, one class at a time. And how are they going to sanitize those computers after each class? Because it used to be where you would have like pre-K go in. And then they would stay in that class for like uh, a certain amount of time and then they would leave and then you have another class standing at the door. So there's no time to go in there to sanitize that room. So the schedules are going to have to be revamped and then you're going to have to have a custodian or someone go in there to clean it before the next class comes. And that's going to take away uh, from that custodian doing other things to go in there. Um, but it needs to be done. So will they revamp the classes? I mean, I'm, I'm just concerned about that for the children going in there like that. That's when that sprayer need to come in and 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 take effect. Instead of you taking that time to walk, when you use that sprayer, it's going to hit mm -hmm. everything, everything. So, you know, the county is going to get hit with some money. So how long would that you know, when you go in there and spray the mist, because we do have a mist at our school that we have in every room now. 
like I said, it's only three of us in the building. And so they, they did give us the sprayer. So we're spraying every day in every room. Okay, so how do we know? Okay, so when we go in there, so after every class, we just go in there and we spray because mm -hmm. we're going to have to work together on this. We're mm -hmm. just not, the custodians mm -hmm. can't do this mm -hmm. alone. We're going to mm -hmm. have to work together. So when we go in there and we're spraying, how long does that spray need to sit in there before the children come up in there? That depends on what chemical you have. Okay. So you got you got the Clorox 360. I don't know which which brand do y'all have. Honey, I don't even know. I just <laughs> they did it to me. I placed the orders. I don't even, I couldn't tell yeah. you what it is. And you have to be careful but when you buy these that. products because when you buy these products, you got to make sure they're not harmful as well. When you're exactly. buying these products, because everybody's selling something right now, you know. Well, so you, we, you, we <laughs> order, we order from a specific vendor, so we have to order the same thing. They give us a guideline and they tell us what we need to order. Okay. So that's what we do. We just the custodians come and they place their orders, but it's from a specific vendor and it's the mm -hmm. same thing around our county. Okay. Because so, you, you're gonna I have some people. You're gonna have some people going buying something just because they say it works and it don't, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> it's just like when we do scripting waxing, we're in that phase now in the building where we are scripting and waxing the floors. That chemical, and you got that mask on your face, it's not gonna work. Because if the let me let me back up. You got first of all, you got to make sure the ventilation is good in your building. Mm -hmm. So Every county, well, DeKalb County, I know, cuts the air off at a certain time and they turn it back <laughs> on at a certain time. <laughs> Say if you're supposed to be to work at seven o'clock, that mm -hmm. ventilation system should be on at 4.30. You need at least two to three hours then that ventilation system work through that building because if you just turn it on at 5.30 or six o'clock and somebody walking in at seven o'clock, it have not had enough time to circulate that air in that building. So that's gonna be mm -hmm. another hit for each county. If their system, ventilation system is not properly well and done and changing those filters on a regular basis, instead of we might have to stop going from every three months to every month now and changing the filters. All right. Nope. So um, Lisa, I would also like to take a, a you know a point of personal privilege. I told you so. Last week we said <laughs> we needed to change this to hot topics with GA. Yes. <laughs> and we did. Like it's our fault. Fault blame blame Lisa and myself. Um, but Lisa, go ahead. Uh, okay. because we're gonna segue so, to something. Else. We want to Cavius, we want to bring you into this conversation. Okay. Um, because we're hearing from our ESPs the challenges that they're experiencing and anticipating and we know our principals in our building are going to be dealing with all of them yes, from yes, all yes. the perspectives yes, yes. so if you can just kind of jump in here and talk about how you see things moving forward for us as we begin to safely move back into our schools well, I think one of the one of the biggest things, especially with our ESPs, uh, I started out with uh, them knowing their rights. Um, what was expected, what's expected, what's being asked, what are their rights? Because a lot of times what happens, especially in rural districts, is sometimes people uh, won't tell them their rights or, or take advantage of them in their rights. So the first thing I did was to make sure that they understood their rights as it pertains to uh, uh, COVID-19. Um, but I do agree with what's being said. It's not just going to fall on the custodians. It's just not going to fall on the cafeteria. It's going to fall on every single person to do what we need to do in this building. Uh, so a couple of things that, that, that we have done, um, already is the administration is going to take on a big part, uh, of things and not just put it back on our custodians. So for instance, when we come in the building, um, we're going to be the ones that we set up a schedule this morning as to the administrators are going to be in the buildings to help do the checks. We're not putting that on the cafeteria staff. Uh, we actually put additional monies uh, to, uh, you know, we got work-based learning students. We got students that, that we pay. So instead of the, uh, and, I, and I, I, I'm so sorry for 
uh, what I just heard. I, I can't remember her name, but she said that the cafeteria ladies had to come down the hallways, get the trash, take out the trash. We're not doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if they got to prepare all those meals and get up, they don't have time to do that. I mean, they just don't have time. So we're taking upon ourselves to go and we're going to get all that trash. It's not going to either be custodians because custodians, they got to be the one when the class change. They got to be the one sanitizer when kids go to the mm -hmm. restaurant. So you can't add that on now unless you're going to add extra pay. I mean, you know, you, <laughs> Say that again. You, you can't continue to add on, you can't continue to add on to their jobs. So what mm -hmm. we're doing is we're taking the, we're taking these funds, uh, a lot of some of it's CARE Act funds, and we are supplementing those. We're getting some of our kids that already on work-based learning because some of them lost their jobs. So now we're, we're infusing those kids into doing that. So we're spreading those kids out all over the county in our schools. Uh, I talked to my uh, middle school principal today and I asked for that asked her the other day how many kids she would need during lunch okay to come in and go down those hallways and get because they're, they're going to be eating in the classrooms what they decided they were going to do and their custodian that their uh, cafeteria ladies that's what they want to do so now the biggest thing is is to have your ESPs at the table number one what do you all want to do it doesn't matter so like for us at the high school they didn't mind and our teachers, I had our teachers at the table, what do you all want to do? They said, we don't feel like we should go to the cafeteria. Okay, so you're fine with them coming back to your classroom to eat. So they said, fine. So we're going to do a rotation of how they're going to keep the kids. Okay, so now what happens is the our cafeteria ladies, they're doing what they normally do. They're not doing anything extra. Our custodians are doing what they normally do. They're not doing anything extra. We're bringing other people into that fold to help out. So like I say, my middle school person uh, says she needs three additional people. So while the cafeteria ladies are doing what they need to do, those folks will be going down the hallways, helping out with the teachers, getting the meals and everything like that. Um, also, too, for us at the, at the high school, we put together a, uh, a rotation. So because I really don't like, I mean, I, my teachers, they say they're fine with it because they don't go, you know, we don't, we don't do lunch. Do we? We, we don't do it at all. Uh, my teachers don't do lunch. Do we? we we as administrators cover lunch, but they said for the sake of safety, you know, for us to start out, they didn't mind doing that. So, but we're going to still rotate through, you know, with them. Some days I'm going to buy them lunch and stuff like that. But my thing of it is, as as principals, even through this, you they cannot pile on everything to teachers, ESPs. You cannot do that. And it's going to take some sitting down and strategic planning and scheduling in that building to keep these things from happening. And so that's what I, I'll give you a classic case in point. We set up our classrooms the other day. We went to each, we, we went to each classroom and um, basically to get it with social distancing, uh, we can get about 20, 20 seats in the classroom. But there was one desk that was I felt like was too close to that teacher. Whereas the teacher was sitting, you know, they had an area here and the desk was there because we got to protect the teacher as well. I said, guys, we're going to have to get 19. My sales press said, well, that's going to be hard on the schedule. I said, well, that's going to be hard on us, but it's not going to be hard on my teacher that I see with these kids every single day and teach the kids with that desk right here by her, by her and, that, and that kid in her face. So those are the kind of things and mentality that's going to take um, for administrators, system leaders and everything like that to ensure that our teachers feel safe coming in. That's the first thing we did today. We talked to our folks about how we're gonna come in the building. Um, now, I know a lot of you, a lot of folks are taking, uh, you know, we're taking temperature, but some of them are doing it by handheld. See, my thing of it, okay, who's gonna stand there and hold Who's, who's gonna stand there and hold it? Who's gonna stand there and hold the fish kid? So, no, how you gonna decide that? Who get that job? Okay, so what we're going to do is we ordered we ordered the uh, the uh, the walkthroughs. So it's the same way like our kids come through when they come through the metal detectors. All it is they can they 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 lean kind of sort of right here. It's none touching, and it takes their temperature, or they can do it by the or they can do it by their by their own, and it, it it goes just like that real quick to keep that that still that that or a regular school coming in. But everybody has to come through those checks. But it's not my teachers. So like they're gonna grab and go, they're gonna grab and go with breakfast. My my cafeteria ladies love grab and go. They grab and go, they go to the room, they'll have to deal with it. So 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 they so they're happy and then they they my lunch, my lunch tray is still full. So when I go eat lunch. So but that's what they do. And so 
then it'll go down the hall, go straight to the teachers. But now, watch this. So, in other words, when the kids come straight to the school, the teachers got the teachers got that. So they can't have our school do. You can't do it. So guess who's doing our school do? Administrators. So that's it's going to take a complete partnership in that building. But they have to protect. You cannot add on additional things to people unless they're okay with those things. You see what I'm saying? You got to make concessions for them. Um, and I, I, I'll give you a classic case. Our board uh, has been great. Uh, they've agreed even through uh, everything to pay everyone. Uh, they paid even when our custodians come out, they paid every single person. Uh, the, the things going on with the pre-K, uh, what they're talking about cutting pre-K days, our board voted last night. Nope, we're paying them. They paying, they, they getting paid just like everybody else. We are not cutting any pay. Nope, they're gonna get the same amount of days. We don't. Our, our teacher pay uh, for pre-K anyway. They get paid just like everybody else. It's not a pre-K salary. We've been paying it, you know, either way. So it's those types of things that you have to do, and that you're gonna have to demand that 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 your folks in your county that they do. You can't you can't throw it back on ESPs, bus drivers, and everything like that. So, um, you know, we've got a shortage of bus drivers. Okay, so um, a lot of our bus drivers are classroom teachers. So we're having to compensate for that, but guess what? That's what we got to do because we can't put it all on the bus drivers to go out there and try to do it and try to do everything. You can't do it. So we're making plans that everybody has to pitch in, but we're bringing. But the key thing is you're bringing everybody to the table. Everybody has a voice. Everybody has an opinion. And I mean, we learned a lot from those meetings as to what um, you know the trials and tribulations that they go through every single day and what they do. So. Uh, right now, so far, everybody's happy with, 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 with what our plans, but but it, it's not because we are smarter than anybody else. We just brought everybody to the table. That's all it was. It, it, it wasn't anything miraculous. Everybody got a chance to say what they want to say. And um, so it's, 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 it's good so far. Now, hope that translates uh, <laughs> once we get the kids back, you know, everything's not perfect. But uh, I would say for our, for, for, for your leaders, they got to take care of your, they got to take care of everybody in the building. I mean, simple as that, you know, like I said, that thing with the one desk, you know, people might not think that's a big deal, but that kid sitting right there, you can't move. That's a big deal. That's a big, that's a big deal to a teacher. You see what I'm saying? So same thing about the bus drivers, you know, that kid coming in, that kid, you know, you know, right up on you, you know, no, you got to make those concessions for those type of things. So, um, we, I think, we, I think we've done a pretty decent job of that, but, um, but I, I'm, I'm glad to hear some of the kind of things that you guys are talking about because um, I like what I like to hear is I like to hear what issues that you have so I can make sure I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, KB, I think you definitely going to have everybody applying to work at your school. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and, um, we've had several of um, our members that are watching us tonight that are commenting um, and listing the name of their school and saying, can you please share your plan with the administrator in their school? Um, and that's it, because let me tell you something. The, the, the administrator is not going to make this work. They're not going to make it work. You can't teach every class. You can't be everywhere. The ESPs, the teachers in the class, that's who's going to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't do this. You, you just... Make sure everybody has what they need to make this thing work. Give them what they give everybody what they need, give everybody what they want, and that way everybody's happy. And that way it trickles down to the children, and then the children still learning. Even in this pandemic, uh, that's what I told our team today. Look, if you have your team, your team should be able to function through anything. If you're you got a great team, no matter what happens, you should be able to function. Y'all should be able to come together, put together a plan, and everybody should be able to function. And that's what we're trying to do through this pandemic. We're going to teach kids, we're going to educate kids in the same manner as we can keep it as normal as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not putting uh, any stress on the back of anybody. We're all going to do this together. And that's just the, you know, we're all going to, I got administrators that are going to come in at 6, because we got teachers that come at 6.30. They like to come in at 6.30. They want to be in that building at 6.30. So get what? <laughs> okay. So y'all come at 6.30. My administrator come at 6.30. They're not going to stay the full 30. They're going to leave at, hey, at 3 o'clock. Hey, we'll see. You done, done your house, go home. You know, so um, it's not putting on the backs of them either. So everybody's just adjusting and making those adjustments, but I'm not going to stop the teacher that love to come in at 630. You see what I'm saying? We're making the adjustments for our folks to keep it as normal as possible, what they normally do. Um, you know, same thing. And the last thing I say is budgets. Man, these folks cutting budgets, they need to stop it. You see what I'm saying? Because the thing of it is you have monies that are in there 
Um, so like for instance, our school based budget, I didn't cut anybody's budget because the way you budget is you keep money there at the end. You just don't have that same money there at the end as you have. You don't you, English, math, science, social, studies, everything they need. They're going to get the same thing. You're still doing PBS. We are keeping our building the exact same. It's going to run the exact same way as we ran it before this COVID-19 happened. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, you, you, you just got to cut all that stuff out. And, um, you know, that's what's going to make people more at ease. And I think that's what's making a lot of our folks at ease. And I hope uh, our administrators, you know, my colleagues follow that same suit because people, number one, they got to feel comfortable coming back. They got to feel mm -hmm. safe coming back. And if they know you support them coming back, mm -hmm. then they'll come on back and they'll do the best job they possibly can in these circumstances. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, mm -hmm. but I hope you can teach a whole lot of classes. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. and if, if I can just chime in on some of the things that the points that he was making about um, doing the grab and go breakfast. Um, like at my school, we have um, four stations down the hall. So, strategically, coming back during this COVID time, we're not going to be able to have. Right kids coming in from all different directions through the doors and you got people passing each other in right. the hallway, you're right. strategically going to have to time those buses that get in there at a certain time. If you're going to have all of the kids coming through the cafeteria for grab and go breakfast, um, adjusting the times for lunches, everything. I mean, if the kids, you know, like in my school, we have only the sixth and seventh graders coming through the cafeteria, and then we have four stations down the hall where the kids are coming in, the car rider line, the front door, and the kids are passing each other in the hall and standing in lines waiting to get, you know, to the breakfast carts or whatever, and then going to the classroom. But during this COVID time, we're going to have to strategically lay out which way these kids are coming in the building, the timing of the school buses arriving, not unloading five and six buses at one time, and just sending everybody through the door. And, and just to throw another little monkey wrench into the, to the whole equation. My daughter is a teacher over in South Korea. They just went back to school two weeks ago. And she said when the kids come to school, they take everybody's temperature before they go through the door. Mm -hmm. They sanitize everything that they bring in that building. And not only that, I don't know how it's going to affect us over here in the United States and our kids going back to school. But she said over there in South Korea, they cannot have any air conditioning on in the building and told all of the teachers they could not even have fans in their classrooms because COVID is airborne and, and it can go through the air conditioning system. And so they're not, they're not even allowed to have air conditioning on in their building. So, I mean... I don't know if anybody thought about that, but this is what they're doing over in South Korea where my wow. teach, my daughter teaches. So it, it's, it's going to be... <laughs> wow. So I, 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 don't, I don't know in my building if no air would work out. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, know. Know. I don't think sure it'll work out in any building. I think... I think That's resignation so went through all of our heads at that moment. <laughs> you know, we were all like, oh, everybody looked at everybody like, whoa. <laughs> you know, we have to model ourselves at what people are doing in other countries that, that are a little bit ahead of our program. But I'll, I'll uh, tell you, you know, when you're... have to see. When you're talking say, about... We'll have to make a <laughs> I don't think it are anybody's building in <laughs> I can't see her. When, when you're talk when you're talking about the uh, what? Oh, when you, when you're talking about the uh, like that, that's that's a bit much. You telling me we can't have air conditioning on? 
Yeah, that's how they're doing it in South Korea. They cannot eat. Uh oh, Lisa, did I lose you? No. Oh, uh, we still have you, KV. Yeah, that's true. Go ahead, KV. What, what, what I was saying is when you're talking about the cafeteria and everything like that, I guarantee you, you can tell them how to do it. I mean, that's who told us that, you know, my cafeteria mm -hmm. lady said, okay, this is how we need to do this. And guess what? That's exactly how we're doing it. Because the thing of this, she knew how, how many kids they can get through the line at a certain time. That's you see what I'm saying? Right. So we mm -hmm. coordinated that mm -hmm. with the bus. I don't know how many kids she can feed at a time coming through that line. You mm -hmm. tell me how many kids you can get going through this line, and mm -hmm. this is how we're going to bring them in, and this is what we're going to bring them in. See, that's the difference. You could probably, I guarantee you, you could tell your administration how they need to bring those kids in, which way they need mm -hmm. to go, and how many we can get served mm -hmm. and in class mm -hmm. at this specific time. See, that's mm -hmm. the difference. They've got to listen at the experts. You guys are the experts. I'm telling you right now, mm -hmm. that's not me. You know, I tell, I, I tell my, you know, I don't know anything about sanitizing that room. Y'all do. How long is it going to take you all to sanitize that room? <laughs> get in, get out. I promise you, I don't know. Yeah. And, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. proud enough to say I don't know that. They are the experts. They've mm -hmm. been doing this for years. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I trust what they're doing. And so that's what's got to happen in this plan, in this plan. And I've talked to, you know, several principals. Man, bring them to the table. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. my custodian, my and my cafeteria staff, they're on my leadership team. Well, why should mm -hmm. they be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, I they, they handle a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. With them being on the leadership team, they yeah. tell us what we need to do, and and we mm -hmm. move from there. Save me. I promise you, I'm being. I, I, it's gonna sound funny, but I'm being honest. Save me a whole lot of hours and a whole lot of headache. I mean, so I don't have to figure it out. I, I mean, I just. You, right. I just wish a lot of the administrators would think like you, but they don't. And I don't understand why. I, I mean, yeah, I it, 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 it causes it more headache. It causes more headache um, than they would have to deal with because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, our cafeteria, our cafeteria ladies, they know exactly what they're doing. They mm -hmm. know how to get those mm -hmm. kids in and out of mm -hmm. a line. So mm -hmm. why am I trying to figure that out? You know what I'm saying? Right. Not, not that That's I don't want to work or anything else. They know mm -hmm. how many kids walk through that line. Even if I got the nice little numbers over here, got my charts over here. <laughs> no, that scrap that. that. That don't mean anything. They know they don't even have to use charts. They know how many kids come through that line, and so uh, that's why we they're happy. Uh, we went with their plan, which I, they knew I was gonna go with anyway. I mean, they know how many kids want to come through there, you know. Anyway, and so when they want to make adjustments, you know, we make them. But I guarantee you, you know how to get those kids through. You know how to get those kids mm -hmm. through efficiently. Mm -hmm. You know how to get them through the line, and they just mm -hmm. need to listen. And that's all. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I wish and I hope that you guys get that same thing with your administrators. Make them bring y'all to the table. You you yeah. you, 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 you gotta be at the table. I mm -hmm. mean, because if not, you're gonna wind up having to redo a whole plan because of something you didn't mm -hmm. think about because you don't do that every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sure you've been in leadership all these years and you got all this experience. I get it, mm -hmm. but you don't have experience in that. Yeah. <laughs> You've never done that. And so you need to bring uh, all of our folks to the table so that way they know they know what they're doing and just trust them um, that they're going to get it done. And we're just there to support. And um, that's it. So, you know, I just think that if you do that, so like, I, you know, we brought our nurse in, our nurse went through, uh, our, our head nurse, and then our, our school nurse, we brought them through, say, look, Hey, let's go through this. Let's walk through this thing. We walk through mm -hmm. it. What do they think? Mm -hmm. What do they think we need to buy? Mm -hmm. So before we bought the hand, mm -hmm. before we bought the walkthroughs, we asked the nurse, now, is this going to be a good buy? You know, mm -hmm. because my thing, and let me tell you what she said. Here's what happened. So we were sitting there thinking now, before we before we met with her, is this going to be a good buy for us to do the walkthroughs? Because you know what? After mm -hmm. COVID, when COVID goes down, then why are we going to need it? You know what she told me? Dr. Press, we've been having problems with fevers forever. That kids mm -hmm. come through with fevers. Mm -hmm. for so if mm -hmm. we still checking fevers, even after COVID go down, we still may stop mm -hmm. the flu, some other type of sickness that other mm -hmm. kids have. So it's mm -hmm. going to be a good buy. And yeah. you know what? I didn't even think about it like that. You know what? Because I'm not versed in nursing. I didn't go to school to be a nurse. So that's why she had to be at the table to tell us these things. And 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 she actually was the one. She asked me, she said, uh, how, um, uh, I don't even remember what, something about the, how accurate was the was the thing, ma'am? I have no clue. So let's get the guy on the phone. <laughs> and ask him all these questions. <laughs> and, I'm like, and so she decided. She decided on a big purchase 
she decided what we was going to buy because that's her expertise. Mm -hmm. I had no idea, you know, mm -hmm. what that is. And I think that if we, if, as we as leaders and, you know, we take that, put that pride down and depend on the experts mm -hmm. in those categories, I promise you'll save you a whole lot of headache. Mm -hmm. my, stuff is already, my stuff is already done. I'm on vacation. Even in COVID-19, <laughs> you know, you see me still smiling. Wow. Wow. <laughs> because, because of, I rely on the people around us. And yeah. so they, they're happy. I'm happy. So, you know, um, but it's going to be a challenge and uh, flexibility and everything like that. But I, you know, my thing of it is, is please, please, please get at the table in these meetings. You know, go and ask about being on the leadership team. Mm -hmm. Go, 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 go yeah. and ask. Um, I'll never forget. I'll never forget this guy. He, 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 he actually changed me. A custodian actually changed me as a leader with this statement right here. He told me we, we were at, we were doing the uh, strategic plan and he was on the strategic plan. And get what he said. He said, you know, y'all talking about professional learning. He said, y'all know, we never have professional learning as a custodian. I want to learn how to better clean. Uh -huh. I want to learn how to better do it. Boy, I'll tell you, I had never even thought about that. And he was right. He was dead right. He wanted to be better at his job, the same way you want mm -hmm. to be better at your job as mm -hmm. a teacher. And so that that totally changed my whole way of thinking. Because, but but I implore you to go to your lead and say, let us sit on these leadership teams. So that way, we, we got stuff that we can tell you too that can help you with your day. So, mm -hmm. um, just just please 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 do that. Y'all have anything that that we hadn't thought about? It, send it to me. Y'all gonna have a plan. And you're at Burke County, what school? <laughs> uh, Burke County High School. <laughs> okay, so, I'm right down the road. Yeah, where, you, where are you? I'm in Richmond County. Hey, hey, whatever y'all do. Okay, oh, I know. Hey, I live right here in Waynesboro. I, I know, know right? right here. You want to come up here in Burke County? <laughs> hey, um, so, <laughs> so, send that, so send that to me. If y'all doing some stuff that, that, you know, we don't know about, um, send it to me. Uh, we're reading everything that we got because everybody got good ideas as mm -hmm. to what they're doing. We're trying to do whatever fits whatever fits our school. So um, you know, that that that's the that's the way we that's the way we do it. And uh if you do it that way, like I took we we, we were doing our um auditorium. So we had to go down to Statesboro and go look at Statesboro, they built a new auditorium. Well, my custodian had to go. Because mm -hmm. uh, she mm -hmm. one got to clean it. Well, but here, well, I'm interested in coming to your school to see how your stations look and the thermometer yeah, that you're purchasing. Have you received it yet? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We've already I, we are we've already bought over 125,000 um, in the county uh, mask. Uh, the mm -hmm. mask brand. Uh, I got over 500 masks at our school. Uh, we've already got the um, the uh, stations for the hand sanitizers. We we put two at every door. Every door, the, the the ones that dispense none touching, uh, they That's stand right. up. That's right. So we got mm -hmm. those right there. Uh, we've mm -hmm. ordered the uh, the walkthroughs. So we're we're prepped. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. I'm going. I, I got the, I got the school credit card with me. If I go past the family <laughs> dollar, I go past something. I pick up something. I just that's what we've been doing. So we've been okay. we just been stockpiling. Uh, just my the biggest thing is the biggest thing is is making everybody feel safe coming back that building. Mm -hmm. that, right. that, that's number one. That's, that's number one. Mm -hmm. Everything else is totally mm -hmm. secondary. Everything. Okay. Else, we, we presented that to all of our teachers, and everybody's like, "Okay, well, they only." You know, we we that's that's my number one thing right now is make everybody feel safe coming mm -hmm. back into that building. And mm -hmm. if they if we can do that, then I think we could we could do some things. But now, is it is it perfect? No. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Everything will be perfect. We're trying to keep our classes, um, all of them down to 19, uh, uh, everywhere we can. Um, I think we're going to be able to do that. It's just taking some a lot more scheduling than, than usual. Uh, biggest thing is, uh, I don't know how many teachers I have on here. Man, implore them folks, get them, them folks through summer school. That way you don't have to double those classes up. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, go, go and track those kids down that are behind. Get them caught up over the summer on virtual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get, get them caught up. If you get them caught up, mm -hmm. then you don't have to double them. You don't have to double their classes, which which increases your class size. So we're chasing kids down right now. And uh, but uh, like I say again, bus bus drivers, you know, that's that's gonna be main with the with the with the rigs with the rigs on the bus driver. And uh, I I do got a question. Um, if I got a bus driver here, are they requiring you all to take temperatures as the kids coming on the bus? That's number one. They want to make sure the tips are taken from all the students. And that's going to be a challenge. Absolutely. 
Yeah, you know, we have vessels that will be close in you know, proximity with kids. There's no way you can separate these kids. We're going to make a lot of trip back and forth if you're going to have an empty seat between mm -hmm. the students. And then the timing to get them to school on time, it's going to be another challenge. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can see us going all around the clock almost. Because you got to start early enough to get the kids. Mm -hmm. And you got a lot of drive with four routes, and they're already shorthanded. Because you got two elementary, one middle school, and one high school. To get these kids where they need to be on time, it's going to be mm -hmm. unbelievable yeah. challenge for a driver. And then try to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And making sure that they are able to follow the instruction of the mask, which is going to be another challenge. So there's a lot of thought need to go into transportation. And Even with kids. the weather, Ernest, the, the weather is going to be a factor to y'all as well if y'all right. have to take those temperatures. That's you right. know, you're talking about a rainy day, a cold day. It's, 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 it's going to be, I, I don't see how they expect y'all, you know, to do that. Um, as to me, would you uh, got CDL license? You're not getting paid enough. Exactly, you know? exactly. <laughs> and that's one of the re that's one of the reasons um, they we're looking uh, uh, looking strongly to not have our bus drivers doing that. Uh, have a have a shield for them. They'll have their mask so they're protected when the kids come on the bus um, and everything like that. And then once they get to the school, then we'll take those temperatures. Um, and I think all the bus drivers they 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 didn't want to have to do that. Um, because you know you got to get out off the bus, take the temperature. Then I mean that's going to take a a, a, mm -hmm. a long, long time to try to get mm -hmm. those kids, you know, uh, to the school and on the bus. So I think we're not we're, we're we're not we're trying to do what we can do to not have our bus drivers do that. Um, so, uh, so, but I was just wondering what other counties were doing uh, in that sense mm -hmm. too. But you still got to protect the bus driver, you know. Yeah. So that's what we talked mm -hmm. to them about. Hey, look, so are you going to be okay with that? They say, well, you know, it's it's gonna be hard for me to take the temperature. I'm out if you have me up, you know, something up there where the kid can't get to me and I'm protected <laughs> and I got my mask, I'd rather just do that because I'm sure I'm I'm gonna be on the bus for them for no matter what, a minimal amount of time. Um and so uh but the kids will have to have a mask on, on our buses. They oh, cannot no. get on that one. They will have to have a mask on, on our buses. A lot of our kids get on buses with drivers that's already sixty-five years of age. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And so that's Ken, yeah, uh, that same so, problem we have. So I think what we've heard here a lot of times, you know, um, definitely we see where there are cuts happening, you know, uh, but we realize even through conversation that it's going to actually require more staff, more funding, um, you know, because even as Mr. Ernest was having that conversation there, doing multiple trips, guess what you're going to see an increase in, a spike in, diesel yep. costs. Yep. And so yep. I think this segues and takes us right into this other individual, very important individual who's on here with us, uh, Mr. Joe Fleming. As Kavius mentioned, budget, money, all of those things. And we know that that comes from essentially the top down. Um, and so even as we just had our, our primary elections yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. Joe, would you care to give us like a, if you could just give us a quick update, uh, legislative update, um, you know, especially even when we talk about budgeting and how we can be a part of the conversation and uh, the decision making. Sure. And uh... Thank you, Lisa and Justin, for putting together this amazing panel. This may be the best call that we've done yet. And I, I, almost, wanted to, I almost wanted to be part one of a five part series. Uh, so many great things said on the call today. Um, Dr. Preston made, made the absolute critical point here and that is GAE and our members have to be engaged at the local level. And we can't just sit back and wait for us to be told what to do. There are critical issues at stake where we need to um, lobby, if that's the word you want to use, or educate uh, uh, districts and systems on what's actually going on. And again, Dr. Preston, you know, as he pointed out, we're, we're not all experts on every aspect of school, but we are experts in our own area, and we've got to speak up. And, and I'm just grateful for, for the six of you for being on this call and, and helping to lead that charge. I'm curious how many um, on the call have been contacted or included by their school administration or district administration on potential plans coming up. I know we've got some school districts in Atlanta 
They've tried to plow ahead without the input of ESPs and teachers and found themselves with some uh, backlash on that. Um, but we need to be involved at the local level. Um, we will be seeing the state legislature return to the regular session next Monday, um, the 15th. <clears throat> and their primary duty in the remaining 11 days of the session is to adopt a state budget. Initially, the governor and the chairman of the appropriations committee asked each agency and department for a 14% cut in funding, which for the Department of Education would have been about a $1.6 uh, billion dollar cut. Um, that's since been pared back to 11%. Uh, DOE made cuts essentially across the board with no prioritization of particular programs over the other. Um, I'm hopeful when it comes to the General Assembly that the legislature will decide as should that education is a high priority and that funding cuts may be less uh, than 11%. But the department has largely passed the buck on to, to local districts to decide how they're gonna make the cuts uh, in QBE funding that may be coming and other programs. Um, and those are difficult decisions, but we have to be engaged at the local level. Um, Likewise, on COVID-related issues, I think we'll see some legislation there to address some of the concerns that some districts have about providing PPE for students or grants that may come in, in, in that area, which will, which will be welcome. Uh, Angela, I, I think I hope you got some money from the CARES Act uh, that was dedicated for sanitation and, uh, and cleaning. And I don't know that we're gonna see any more federal dollars come, come down for education or for COVID-19 related um, sanitation requirements, uh, perhaps, but I'm, I'm not optimistic right now. They seem to kind of slow the train down on that. Um, but your voices are, are needed at the state capitol, whether you're there virtually or in person to stand up for public education and they're absolutely needed at the local level as well. And Joe, we saw a question or a comment on here um, about people essentially quote unquote begging their um, superintendents, their district officials, their principals, all of those decision makers to be a part of the conversation. Um, and I think Lisa and I will both say, you shouldn't have to beg to be a part of that conversation right. because mm -hmm. according to the mm -hmm. uh, Every Student Succeeds Act, that was signed and put into place, educators and other stakeholders are expected and mandated to be a part of that conversation. And so definitely feel free to pull out that document and hold them accountable to say, no, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you that educators are supposed to be at this conversation and at this table. So yes. Yeah, I'm not aware of any district that's, that's gone as completely this deep into it as Burke County appears to have. Um, and yeah, I, I've seen comments on this uh, Facebook live call asking for your plan, Dr. Preston, if you've got something to share, <laughs> it could be a template. Oh, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it. Yeah. I will. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a whore of information. I just think, you know, everybody, we all, we all can share. Uh, I'm going to retire one day soon. So y'all have all of it. So. <laughs> aware of this, but there are actually at least three districts in the state of Georgia that are considering increasing class sizes in yeah. response to budget cuts, which wow. is nonsensical. I mean, obviously, it's not a good academic policy, but it's even worse policy for health. Yeah. Um, but we've got a role to play in, 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 as you said, having a seat at the table. If we have yeah. to bet and fist, stand up and cry and shout, we, we need to have that seat at the table. And I think once you get it, they'll see how they'll see how important it is. But you got to get at that table. I mean, that's that's just all that's just all to it. Um, and if you get there, then I, I think everybody see the dividends of you being at that table. I'm not sure every district has really thought through, for example, what uh, Mr. Ernest said about bus transportation and temperature checks. Uh, I think they're maybe operating at a higher level now and just budget cuts and and other things, but when you get down deep into the logistics of how reopening schools is gonna look like, those are things that have to be addressed and now is the time to address them. Well, here's the thing. 
if you can't get them to the school, all your plans in the school won't matter. <laughs> I mean, they, they really won't yes. matter. So, so the number one thing is transportation. I mean, yeah. They, they, yeah. You, you have to get them there. And so until mm-hmm. you get that squared away, it, it's, it's, it's a meet point. And, and just by when we was at that meeting, that's the first thing we said. That said, our, our transportation department at ease, they were ready to go. When we recognized the fact that if we don't get them there, if we don't mm-hmm. recognize mm-hmm. the fact that the most important thing is getting them there, mm-hmm. uh, we, can, we can have the best laid plans we want to have when they get there. But if they don't show up, the plans, you know, they're for <laughs> not. I mean, that's just that's just a fact. So, uh, but the last thing know. I have is that I'm going to share the link to this conversation with the Department of Education okay. and other policy leaders because I think it exposes some of the challenges that that we're all facing. Uh, and I would encourage anybody who's, who's watching or listening or on the call to sh- share it as widely as possible. I think there's a lot to be learned from this dialogue. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I want to once again thank this great panel, these great members. Um, Justin and I, um, I, we just called and got in touch with y'all and said can you do this and you have been amazing you said of course and you've all jumped on and I think this is a conversation that needs to continue Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I think this conversation can be can be the impetus for it continuing and um, as I did last week I looked up a quote for tonight to kind of close us on a positive And the quote I found was, we live in unprecedented times. It's time for unprecedented kindness. And I would add to that, we live in unprecedented time. It's time for unprecedented collaboration. And that's what we are going to need to get through this. So Justin, you want to close us out? Um, Yes, Um, of course, I'll kind of hit on something that we've all kind of seen in the media here. Um, And as educators, it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, But, you know, of course, it's our goal to to teach each generation that your hard work, intelligence, and humanity uh, will take you further in this world. And so educators can make a difference by eradicating racism in classroom through love, acceptance, and transparency. And so I ask that each of you, our followers, Uh, those of you who are on this uh, panel with us today, is that we operate, oh my God, I almost get emotional saying this, um, that we do operate with love and acceptance and transparency uh, with our students, our colleagues, and that we drive public education in this great state of Georgia uh, to just spotlight um, because it is the pillar of every community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So thank you all so much for our viewers um, and our amazing leaders who joined with us this evening. Um, Lisa and I will forever be indebted. We have another board member in the back too, Mrs. Preston. Speaking in. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank Everybody you. stay thank safe. Um, please reach out to us um, if you have any questions, concerns, cares, or just to have a conversation. And visit joingae.org to become a member of the best <laughs> professional organization here in the state of Georgia. That's right. All right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.